And then the only 4 o'clock game that's going to have any playoff relevance, we got UCF, who's 3-2, and two, traveling to Kansas, who's 4-1. and one. Kansas favored by two points on Fox. What's heartbreaking about this game is I was excited. This was going to be a playoff elimination game. It was going to be a playoff elimination game. UCF had Baylor beaten up by 25. You lose. How do you blow it if you're UCF? At home. You're not even at Baylor. And you let Baylor get back into the game, you let Baylor take the lead, and then you miss the game-winning field goal, to be fair. Very long field goal. Dude, can't really blame that on the kicker who's, like, asking your kicker to make a 60-yard field goal for the win is putting him in a position to fail. Um, Timmy McLean is the leading passer now for UCF. He's gone 50 of 82, thrown for 872 yards, seven touchdowns, two interceptions. Johnny Richardson on the ground has had 45 carries for 394 yards and a touchdown. And Kobe Hudson's had 21 catches for 468 yards and two touchdowns. Jalen Daniels for the Jayhawks has gone 56 of 75, thrown for 705 yards, five touchdowns, one interception. Devin Neal's had 65 carries for 439 yards and five touchdowns. Lawrence Arnold's had 10 catches for 251 yards. Um, these two teams have never played, so it's at least an interesting thing. These two teams are going to start playing every year. First one's going to be at Kansas. Second one's going to be at the Bounce House next year. Um... I think what's really interesting about this fo football game is who's starting a quarterback for both of these teams, right? Because UCF's been rocking with Timmy McLean for like three weeks now against Villanova, against Kansas State, and then last week against Baylor. They've been rocking with Timmy McLean. But Timmy McLean's one and two now, right? Like he might be the leader in passing yards, but he has played an extra game. Um, and he looked good against Kansas State, but he, he really he made some big time errors. And the fumble really hurt if you're UCF because that allowed Baylor to get back into the football game. Um, can John Rise Plumley play again? Because when John Rise Plumley is playing, he is a really good football player. Because not only does he threaten you with his arm, he threatens you with his legs. With Jimmy McLean, you also get that. But John Rise Plumley is a better runner, and I think a better overall quarterback. Can you get Plumley black for this game? Same question for Kansas. Jalen Daniels is the biggest question mark ever. If he had played against Texas, I think they keep that game close. They might pull off the upset. Jalen Daniels has this team playing insanely well. But do you have Jalen Daniels? Or are you rocking with Bean? Um, I think the quarterback situation is really interesting for both these teams. I don't know what to know of Jalen Daniels because, again, they keep his injuries very much under wraps about how he's doing. Because, again, you didn't even know he was hurt until right before the game started. I mean, like, you knew he was going through at least a little bit of an injury, but he had been practicing all week. You'd think he would be able to play. Not able to play. You do know around when John Rice Plumlee is going to be back. I think John Rice Plumlee started taking snaps this week. I like Plumlee to return in this game. I don't know about Jalen Daniels. But regardless, I think this is a big game for UCF on the road. There's a chance to pick up their first Big 12 victory, and I think they do it. Give me UCF to pull off the upset on the road.